We really appreciate you taking time out your day to, to listen to us. And a special thanks to the Supplier Development Programme for giving us this platform and this opportunity to speak. We really do appreciate it and we hope that this will be an informative session for you and there'll be some, some takeaways for everyone at the end. So let's see, so we'll start with the agenda. I'm hoping to explain a little bit about who PFH are and what it is we actually do. Before, of course, we get into our DPS, our Dynamic Purchasing System for Responsive Repairs and Voids. We've got a video that we'd like to show you on how the Intend portal works. So that's our procurement portal where you will find and can bid for opportunities. And at the end, we'll have some time for some questions as well. So as Fran said, we'll power through this quite quickly so it's not death by PowerPoint. Uh, and please do feel free to put any questions in the chat. So, who are PFH? Well, in a sentence, PFH are a procurement services provider dedicated to the social housing sector in Scotland. We were set up in partnership with Housemark and the Chartered Institute for Housing, and we're managed by the Improver Group. So, in Scotland, we've got over 100 members now, and our membership is made up of councils, housing associations, and most recently, the NHS. We manage in the region of 250 contracts, which between them yield spend under management of around £50 million. In the rest of the UK, we're much larger. So in the rest of the UK, we have over 900 members. We have over 2,500 managed contracts for a third of a billion pounds spend. So we really do know social housing and we certainly know procurement. So what do we actually do? What is our offering to our members? So we manage a suite of fully compliant framework agreements and dynamic purchasing systems for our members to use for when they buy goods and services. We also offer a range of consultancy services and we also have an unrivaled technology offering that com complements those three business areas. Scotland is managed by myself. I am the account manager for responsive works and support services categories. And Chris McGinn, who's on the call with us today and will help me with some questions at the end, is our commercial manager and Chris looks after planned works. So a wee bit uh, deeper dive into what it is we, we, we actually offer. So in total, we have 25 different framework agreements that cover our planned works, responsive works and support services categories. We have three dynamic purchasing systems. So we have a DPS for capital works, for compliance services and uh, for responsive repairs and voids, which is our, our newest. So just to shed a wee bit more insight into some of the frameworks. So our planned works category is our most popular in Scotland. As you can imagine, housing providers are continually upgrading things like windows and doors and kitchens and bathrooms. And we've got very popular frameworks for those solutions. Recently, we've seen growth with our ISH framework and our renewables framework uh, to help housing providers meet the, the ever looming net zero targets that are, that are slowly creeping in. Responsive Works is one of my categories and our flagship framework that sits in this category is our materials framework. So this really supports members who have their own maintenance teams or direct labour organisations. We can help them procure their plumbing and heating, their building materials, their electrical materials at very competitive rates. We've also got a specific lot for helping engage local suppliers into, um, into our members, which is, which is a really important directive from our members that we'll, we'll come on to uh, just a wee bit later on. And finally, support services. So support services um, covers quite a wide range of, of different uh, categories here. Recently, we've been very busy with telecare and telehealth. We've got the uh, analog to digital switchover happening in Scotland. So we're working with housing providers to bring all their equipment up to date uh, for that switch over, things like ward and call equipment, things like that. Uh, some of the other highlights in this category would be the energy framework. I'm sure everyone's aware of the, the, the rising costs in energy, so we have a framework for that that helps support our members. 
And uh, the very last one there, as I'm sure you can imagine, PPE has kept our business very busy indeed uh, since, since the pandemic. So on to dynamic purchasing systems. Uh, so we offer three, as I mentioned, dynamic purchasing systems to complement the 25 framework agreements that we've got. Now, it's probably worth at this point just explaining some of the differences between a DPS and a framework agreement because they're both similar in that they offer our members a fully compliant route to market. But uh, there are some differences and some of the differences between the two are illustrated in this slide. But to explain it very quickly, with our framework agreements, suppliers have to go through a comprehensive tendering uh, exercise where both price and quality are evaluated. We'll then award successful suppliers uh, a place on the framework for a maximum duration of four years. Uh, at that point, the framework is closed to new suppliers. Now, this isn't the case with the DPS. Uh, we don't evaluate price or quality and new suppliers can join the DPS at any point during its lifetime. And our DPS is run for 10 years. This is becoming uh, an increasingly popular solution for our members because it gives them that ability to engage with uh, new suppliers and of course a wider, um, a wider number of suppliers as well. Uh, the final thing to say on, on DPS and framework is, is the call off methods. So with a framework, uh, our members can choose to direct award or they can run a mini competition. But again, because no price or quality is evaluated at the uh, initial stages with the DPS, the call off method is mini competition only. So, as I mentioned, we've, we've three dynamic purchasing systems. We've a dynamic purchasing system for capital works for compliance services and our latest one and the reason for the call today for responsive repairs and void works. So just to give you a little bit of a flavour of uh, some of the, the DPSs that we've got and a bit more detail about them, the Capital Works DPS is our most popular solution in Scotland by some distance. It covers quite a, quite a, quite a wide variety of things as you can see from the slide here. Recent success stories would be our insulation lot. So last year we saw over 10 million pounds worth of work go through the insulation lot. And this is actually in spite of us having uh, a renewables framework where uh, these kind of works are covered. So the, the attraction for our member for using the DPS was that they could attract more bids and drive better value for money with having that increased uh, supplier pool to pick from. We also have a compliance services DPS, and we've been really happy with how, how this has performed. Some of the, the highlights recently would um, come under the fire and associated services lot. We had a three million pound fire door replacement program go through this lot, as well as a three and a half million pound LD2 uh, alarm program go through that as well for the uh, new legislation for smoke and fire alarms. So again, really, really, really happy with how, how that DPS has, has developed. So that brings us on to our responsive repairs and, and void works DPS. So this is our newest DPS. It launched just last summer. And um, the lots that are available in this DPS are, are on the screen here. And, and most of them are, are very straightforward. So full, sell, full service multidisciplinary for all trades contractors, general repairs and joinery, Plumbing and heating, electrical, all very self-explanatory. Specialist Works has quite a, a wide bit of scope in this. So if you're perhaps looking at this and, and not quite sure where your business or where your line of work can fit in, uh, the Specialist Works actually covers quite a, quite a wide scope. So just to give you a bit of an idea, since we launched this DPS last summer, we've had things like cleaning, drainage, carpeting, glazing, plastering and landscaping all go through the specialist works lots. So it's, uh, like I say, quite quite self-explanatory for most of the lots there, but be rest assured that there is scope uh, under the under the specialist work lots if, if you're not if, if you're not seeing where, where you can maybe fit in right away. So just a, a, a bit of background on why we designed this uh, and launched this this DPS, it's it's on, on the back of feedback from, from our membership. So all our solutions, in fact, are designed 
in uh, conjunction with our members. We listen to them and we listen to what their, their pain points are and we'll design our solutions accordingly. And on the back of speaking to our members, north and south, east and west, we were hearing the same thing over and over again in that our members were having uh, problems with backlogs of uh, responsive repairs and void works due to COVID. Um, and to add further insult to injury, what we've also seen is two of the larger contractors that were doing a lot of this work for a lot of our members have completely pulled out of Scotland. So there's a, a definite demand for, uh, for this kind of work right now. Our members are also telling us that they want to engage with uh, local suppliers where possible. So again, the fact that we can add new suppliers to this at any time really lends itself towards that. And we're hoping that we can, we can bridge that gap for our members with a solution. So what are some of the benefits for, for you as a supplier for, for joining our DPS? Well, this really is your chance to get a bite of the cherry, the public sector cherry, if you're not doing work in, in this space at the moment. Um, if you've ever had the sort of objection of procurement when you've engaged with, um, with anyone in the social housing sphere, this is your ticket to be invited to the party, so to speak. So it should increase you, uh, your access to opportunities. Um, you won't be, you'll be able to bid for works that previously you, you might not have been able to because you're not on any national frameworks. Importantly with the DPS, the works are all tendered by postcode area. So some of the feedback we've had from suppliers with the framework agreements is that they've been, suppliers have been nervous about uh, applying for them because often they have national coverage. Uh, and if you're a contractor based in Dundee, for example, and you're only interested in doing work in the Dundee area, then that's absolutely fine because, as we said there, the works are tendered uh, strictly by postcode area. If for any reason, when you submit your application uh, to join the DPS, that it's rejected for any reason at all, you don't need to wait for four years or for anything expiring before you can resubmit. You can resubmit your application straight away. We'll give you good feedback on where you can do better and reasons why it might have been rejected in the first instance. And we'll happily work with you uh, to, to get it right. One of the other benefits that, that we don't actually have on, on the slide here, but it's definitely worth mentioning, is that you'll also get access to myself uh, and to my colleague Chris. Our compliance DPS and our capital works DPS, the success of them have, has been built on really strong relationships with our suppliers. We are more than happy to engage with you on a regular basis to let you know about what we're hearing in the market, what some of the uh, jobs are that might be coming up, uh, and, and work with you on, on driving business. So what are we looking for from all, from all of this? So we want to increase uh, the coverage across all five lots, definitely. We, we, we only launched this DPS last summer, so we've only got a small handful of, of contractors on it at the moment. We want a mix of small and large size contractors, so there's, there's no preference to, 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 to what we want. We want a, a, definitely a good mix of of all sizes of contractors. And again, because the, the DPS works are tendered by postcode areas, we want uh, both small and large contractors in, in all of the postcode areas throughout Scotland, so that when we put this solution in front of our members, it's an attractive proposition for them to use. Uh, and of course, we want new relationships, uh, which is really important as well. We can't stress that enough that the success of our other DPS solutions have really been built on the back of quality relationships with our suppliers, where we're more than happy to engage with you on a regular basis to, to look at what's coming up and, and, and see what we can do together. So what we have for you now is a, is a video on our Intend portal. Now, our Intend portal is where you will find opportunities, it's where you'll bid for opportunities, and where you will find out if you've won any opportunities. So this is a video that we actually done in a previous SDP webinar, but it's my colleague James who's speaking in the video. He references my colleague Chris, just in case anyone's wondering, but James will do a much, much better job than, than what I will of explaining how the Intend portal works. Uh, so this is a really informative video that gives you an idea of, of the next steps, how you can get involved uh, and exactly what you need to do. So I'm gonna play this video for you now 
after this video, that will conclude my presentation and uh, myself and my colleague Chris would be delighted to take any questions at all. Perfect, Ross, thank you. I'm going to run through with you this morning um, how you can join the DPS, like I say, as, as Chris has covered. Um, that's something that is uh, on the back of uh, completing this webinar. Um, this is going to remain open for quite a few years, but obviously, the sooner you get on there, the more access you're going to get uh, through uh, the upcoming opportunities that we've got. Uh, I'll demonstrate this through a few through some videos. I think it's a little bit easier if it's more visual as opposed to me uh, simply ex explaining the process that you've got to go through. First thing that you'll need to do is to register. Uh, the first video I'll take you through that of which I'll um, talk over as well. Um, uh, just a note as well, I, I, I believe there's some zoom in uh, options as well down the left hand side of the screen. Um, like I said, this is um, the maximum clarity that we were able to give the video. Uh, you should be able to pick up all the key information, like I say as well. I'll talk over the key. I'll talk over the key bits. Um, so as you can see, uh, just before I play the video, um, on the PFH website again, we'll circulate all the links that you'll need for this. Um, you just first thing to do is to click register. Um, that will then take you to this screen where we'll require supplies um, to fill in information uh, about their organisation. You can see, for example, um, asking for company reference number, the company name. This is just all standard information you would input to register for, uh, for, for any platform. There's nothing in there that's too onerous. Um, as you can see, the video will take you through this, just contact details. Should we need to get in contact with you around upcoming tenders to make sure that you're not missing anything? Um, the user details, you can have more than one user. Like I say, for the larger organisations aware that you may have bid teams that um, have six or seven people working on bids, so that uh, the portal uh, allows for that. You can have more than one uh, level of access. Um, this page here, this is, um, again, it just takes you to a little bit more information about what your organization covers. You'll see here that um, I'm going to uh, input a category code of which you'll be notified of, of opportunities in, a, in and around that category. Um, again, I'll circulate links uh, if you're not familiar with that system. It's not uh, nothing to worry about there um, in terms of finding what your organization does and how that um, leads into what codes uh, are applicable for your organization. So you can see here, I'm just going to put in a generic one, which I'm um, familiar with. It's 399, and that is just an overarching planned works um, code. Again, the final screen just covers off just for a little bit more information about yourselves. Um, so with, with the aim of the DPS is to incorporate SMEs as well. We just want to make sure we're capturing a, a good picture of the, the types and sizes of the organisation that are on our DPS and say if it's going to lead us that we're, we're not tapping into the SMEs as much as we'd hope to, that we could we can adjust to that and, um, and start engaging with more and more companies. So we've got a great balance of all, of all contractors across the DPS. Next stage, using the intended portal, adding the company details and how to access um, the DPSs that we have. This next video, again, likewise, I'll run you through that um, with a video so you can see visually what you need to do. Um, I'll just get that underway for you. So when you've registered, you will receive an email um, saying that the registration has been successful. It normally takes a couple of seconds. You can then just log straight in. Um, as you can see across the top, uh, there's a couple of titles here, but the main one that you're looking for once you've logged in is tenders, and then to click on current. This will give you access to all current tenders that we have available through uh, our intent portal. As Chris mentioned, um, all frameworks will be on will be on PCS. Um, I've just knocked that back to the start, so bear with me. Just to try to pause that at a key point. Um, yeah, so all the framework tenders are on PCS, which I'm sure you're familiar with. This is around the DPSs uh, that we have live. 
Uh, so this is where you'll, you'll access all that information. So yeah, as of COVID, you click into tenders, you click current. To be aware of this DPS is for both England, Wales and Northern Ireland and for Scotland. So you can see if, if it's with this, it's, it's the Scottish based DPS that you're looking for. So uh, as you can see, I'm highlighting through the video, just be aware that the, the you have to click on the Scotland one. Um, Otherwise, it'll, it'll bring you tender opportunities for England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, which is obviously no problem if you also cover work south of the border as well. Um, in this video, like I said, uh, I'll run through uh, a bid for the Capital Works DPS Scotland. Um, you see, just to double check again, that it's titled Scotland and it'll end in an eight. Um, and that's how you'll be able to check that you're on the right one. Express interest in that tender again. If you want to express interest, and then you realise it's not actually for you, that's no problem. Please have a have a look around, see if it's for you. There's there's no obligation by expressive interest within that. Across the top, you can see there's three tabs. Um, the first tab, the tender, just again more of the same, just a little bit more of background around the tender. Correspondence. If you have any questions, you can. Um, send them via this uh, via this platform or you can contact me or my team directly again i will uh, i'll circulate as um, at the end at the end of this presentation so you can get in contact so now we're at the main part of completing the tender um, there are, this this section here will run you through um, and provide documents that you won't have access to. So these are the, these are three three documents uh, A, B, and C that are provided by procurement for housing in Scotland that we're asking you for. There are other documents that we request, but these will be uh, which I'll, I'll cover later uh, on in the video. But these will be things that you have access for and you don't need us to provide. So when it comes to the bottom, you can see it's asking for a financial assessment form document B. Likely you would have no idea what that is um, but we're, we're providing that for you uh, and I'll run through where that fits in um, there's also a user guide as well um, which runs the runs through essentially what I'm talking through at the moment but I, I appreciate that there's a lot of people from the feedback that we've had that it's a 12 13 page document and sometimes watching a quick video um, is much easier because I know everyone is pressing with time and I will just resume this yeah, it seems to take it back to the start. Just let it catch up to where we were. It seems to be taking it back to the slideshow when I pause it. So I will try and minimize the amount I do that. So you can see, uh, just to recap, It'll be across the top in DPS tender return where you need to click where you can access the tender and then you can start submitting your return. It'll just recap again through the correspondence. Apologies for this. Okay, the next thing to do um, following the download of, of the three documents that, we, that we've provided, it will take you to at the moment is to conf a confirmation of your involvement. Again, this just, open, this just opens up the, um, the tender return for you. There's, there's no further obligation. And you can see from here, these are all the 12 lots that Chris has covered in his presentation. Um, pick the ones that, again, are applicable to yourselves. Uh, you can. Uh, it's, it's not just one uh, DPS lot that you can apply for. If you're a larger construction company, you, you, you may cover all 12 of these uh, lots. Again, um, that's absolutely fine. You can, submit for, you can submit for all 12, you can submit for one or anything in between. So you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm, I'm acting for the purpose of the videos. Um, you'll see it as a Windows and Doors uh, contractor. Um, so I'll click opt out on everything that's not applicable to my business. Um, only opt in for lot six, which is windows and doors, which will then, uh, when, once I become an approved supplier, 
will give me access to all the windows and doors uh, tenders that come through procurement for housing uh, and nothing else which is, isn't applicable to your organisation. Um, you can see uh, the portal may take you to the top of the screen when, uh, whenever you click opt out. Well, the reason for that is um, there are some questions further down applicable to each of the lots. So what that's doing is just refreshing the page. Uh, the more the more lots you apply for, the more category specific question uh, questionnaires that need to be completed. But uh, I'll cover that in the next uh, couple of minutes once the video catches up. Excellent. So you can see that I'm a win I'm Windows installer. Um, I've I've selected the appropriate lots that I need to uh, that I need to be on in order to get access to the tenders that I want to be considered for. And it won't give uh, it won't start sending me tenders that uh, are not linked to my organisation. Using the portal, this is the second video again. Just going a bit more into detail about what needs to be covered and where, and where you can find that information uh, and the final steps in order to submit. Anything marked in red is mandatory. Anything in orange is good to have, but not mandatory. You, you, if you do not fill in any of the uh, orange documents, uh, you will not be rejected. It's it, it's just a good to have, and you can you can see. I'm just running you through some of the documents. Uh, you can see uh, public and employers insurance is mandatory. I'm sure all all your organisations have this. Um, so run through uh, in the order that they appear. There's an evaluation uh, that needs to be completed. You can see on the left hand side, um, there's 150 questions in total. Don't be put off by that. Uh, apart from a couple, they are all yes no questions, and you can see our, our, the video run takes you through just so you can get a flavour. Uh, the, there's no point going through this in any particular detail because I'm sure, like I said, uh, questions around addresses, what type of organisation you are, um, you all know and all be extremely comfortable in f in filling this in again, just a bit of a demonstration to show you. There's a lot of yes, no questions in the boxes are if you've ticked yes or tick no. Again, you can see from here, um, you can see the regions in which uh, you want to be considered for work. Um, again, one of the benefits of the DPS, so you don't have to have coverage of the entirety of Scotland. Um, you can break that down to local authority area. Again, that's trying to be inclusive of SMEs. Okay. Next thing to upload um, is a copy. Uh, which would be saved to your desktop. That's a copy of your accounts from the most recent two years that you have access to. Um, Dynamic purchasing system agreement uh, and the financial assessment forms in red. Again, you can see that, um, that these are mandatory uh, mandatory documents and these are the documents that we provide. Um, we need a copy of your health and safety document. Again, we don't we don't score that. We, we're not expecting um, a sixty page. Um, account of everything that you do, especially if you're a smaller organisation, as long as you have something that, is, uh, something to, that you can detail that uh, has been documented on the on the regulations that you follow in relation to the work that you've carried yeah. out and making sure that's covered in, in a safe manner. We just need a copy of that um, normally uh, signed uh, by a, a director or someone see, seeing you within the organisation. Just skip that back a moment so you can see where I clicked. Okay. What you can see here is um, for every every lot um, that you apply for, there is a questionnaire that needs to be completed. Um, you can see uh, my mouse has just hovered over that. Um, again, that this is mandatory. Um, so I'll, I'll play this now. The main part of what this covers is we need three references of, of similar works that you've you've carried out within the sector. Uh, again, I'm, I'm sure you're able to provide this. Uh, the, main, the main point on this um, is that we're looking for an adequate amount of detail. Uh, we're not looking for war and peace, but as you can see, we're looking for 150 to 200 words per reference. Um, and we also ask for the details um, of that referee 
we we're only get in contact with with a handful. Uh, but it is good if if you get in touch with your FRE first, and so uh, you may be contacted from procurement for housing uh, just just to verify that these works uh, were carried out and these are the contract values. Again, there's just a couple of questions that will be uh, applicable to your to your organisation and the industry, such as the windows and doors contract to work that you, you carry out. Um, again, I'm not going to run through them in detail because there'll be it'll be it'll be stuff that you know more about windows and doors than I do. Um, just make sure that everything in there is completed, save the work, and close that off. Um, you can also see that we uh, we ask for. Um, Fence or Ceritas um, accreditation, or or an industry equ equivalent as well. Um, as long as that industry equivalent you can demonstrate uh, is is of equal standing or similar standing to Fence or Ceritas, um, to to show that as a, you're an accredited uh, installer of windows. There are uh, again, there's there's different accreditations required for different lots. Not all lots have. Uh, have an accreditation requirement. Once all that's completed, once everything in red um, has been uploaded, you'd simply uh, click submit return. Um, that'll give you a notification to say that that's been done correctly. Um, and then it'll be through to my team um, to evaluate that tender. Where we, by regulation, we, we have to turn, turn these around for you in 10 days. Uh, I'd like to think under more circumstances, we can turn that around um, in three or four days for you. Um, so that's a quick overview of the process. Um, I'm sure there's probably a couple of questions. I'll also be circulating the videos as well. There's a user guide within there. It's uh, and I said, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me if, when you come to do these, um, you have further questions. We we want as many of you guys on there as possible across many lots to make our tender process uh, as competitive as possible and to give you access into some really good public, center, uh, public sector contracts.